This video is to reiterate the key findings of a nodular hydradenoma. So from low power, you see a neoplasm that looks to have both solid components as well as cystic components. On higher power, you'll start to appreciate this monotonous kind of poroid population of cells with areas of ductal formation, areas of clear cell change, and areas of squamatization. Um, and hyalinization as well, particularly around vessels. So you can appreciate the hyalinization here. Um, you'll, you'll see that there are areas of clear cells that are aggregating, and then they're kind of separated out by cells that have more of a eosinophilic cytoplasm. Um, and you might actually think that it looks like a paroma, and you'd be correct because they're actually in the same family. So Paromas and nodular hydradenomas are um, essentially of the same derivation of, of eccrine cells. It's just that um, architecturally they're, they're different. And so although you may have a borderline cases, this is a, a very nice case of a solid and cystic component with the poroid cells, the clear cell change, and the hyalinization. So all of these features add up to a nodular hydradenoma. Um, typically, these are, not, are masses that you might find on the head and neck or other parts of the body, and they're usually pretty well circumscribed. So it's important to look around and make sure there's no areas of significant atypia or um, areas of malignant change, because you can definitely have malignant change within a nodular hydradenoma, and that's where you would get your hydradenocarcinoma. Um, but for all intents and purposes, this is just a benign nodular hydradenoma. You might see some areas that look like it has more of a eccrine material, um, so it's like sweat material. Some areas may trick your eye and you, and you think of mucin production, but um, this definitely doesn't look like a basal cell, so um, it could be confused with that to the untrained eye. However, um, most uh, derm path students and um, people who are looking at these slides more often, um, in addition to the dermatopathologists, will, will notice that this has an adnexal tumor appearance. And so classifying it as a nodular hydradenoma is the most appropriate in this case. Um, just keep in mind that paromas are usually a lot better connected to the surface of the overlying epidermis. Um, Dermal duct tumors essentially look like paromas, but they're um, smaller and they're usually separated um, from the overlying epidermis and they're just situated in the middle dermis, but they also have a very similar cytology and architecture to the nodular hydradenoma. Nodular hydradenomas are going to have even more solid and cystic components. And hydroacanthoma simplex is the most superficial that you can get with this family, um, where it essentially looks like this cell population, but it's just proliferating within the epidermis alone. So those are the four entities that are kind of under the acrospiroma family. All right, well, this is just a great example of a nodular hydradenoma.